Ghana's official creditors were said to have met on Monday to discuss uh, restructuring of some $5.4 billion in loans to the country, a key step needed to secure its next tranche of funding from the International Monetary Fund. The bilateral lenders, including the government of China and France, who co-chaired the official creditor committee, hold around a quarter of Ghana's $20 billion of external debt earmarked for restructuring. The meeting is again expected to focus on an agreement about a cut-off date, that is the date after which new loans from bilateral creditors will not be restructured. Uh, defining this date has emerged as a stumbling block for Ghana in its debt rework. So this morning, to help us expand further, I have Paul Yok Frimpong, a development economist and executive director, Africa China Center for Policy and Advisory. Uh, Mr. Frimpong, thank you so much for talking to us. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, we know how important uh, concluding a restructuring plan estimated at $5.4 billion in external debt is for Ghana. How would you describe the reforms that the Ghanaian government has brought on board in the last few months and uh, the strategies at ensuring sustainable financial management, which are criteria needed to secure the fund? Yeah, so obviously the creditors meeting, the official creditors committee meeting, um, it's, it's part of the process that was laid down by the government of Ghana uh, since last year, especially when the government was failing to meet a debt obligation, uh, which led to even uh, having to undergo an IMF bailout uh, last year, which of course the first tranche of the IMF $3 billion uh, uh, bailout was released, I think $600 million or so. And, and part of the requirement for the second tranche of the release of the IMF bailout is that the government might have to get a deal with the official creditors committee, uh, which is led by France and China uh, uh, in, this, in this time. So it, the meeting forms part of the government's uh, the requirements laid back down by the IMF and now even the World Bank because there's also uh, uh, some uh, budgetary support from the World Bank that is also linked or hinged on government success in terms of getting a deal from the restructuring of the 5.4 billion with official creditors coming. So it's not just the IMF, second tranche of the IMF loan that government looking to receive if they're able to get a deal, but also from the, from the World Bank as well, totaling about $1 billion dollars in terms of inflows from both Britain Wood institution, the government is able to get a good response from the official creditors committee, which was held yesterday. We are able to know the true outcome of it. But of course, uh, through the Ministry of Finance, it was clear that the government is very confident that they've done some good work and, and the preparatory grounds is, is well noted in, in the sense that they believe they're going to be coming out of that meeting with some positive outcome that will uh, unlock the, the, the funds from both the IMF and the World Bank totaling about $1.1 billion uh, to come in within the next one or two months. So I think I think it's just part of the ongoing process. And, and once you are part of the IMF program, the, the, the lay down rules are there. These are the procedures you're supposed to go through. Uh, first, we started off even before the IMF accepted us to be on the bill. We had to show that indeed domestically, the government has to show that it has the capacity and the ability to meet the obligation by going through what we call the domestic debt restructuring. So we went to, uh, 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 we did that, the, the, the DDE in recent months, which is where governments had to uh, speak to Lota, Luca, you know, uh, uh, creditors in terms of some of the instruments the government has already issued, uh, some of the bonds, local bonds that the government has already raised. And so there was a debt, a domestic debt restructuring. Okay. Now they have external debt restructuring as well, which is going to be, to unlock those funds that are supposed to come in. So let's now look at the cutoff date. Um, some creditors uh, preferred December 31, 2022 as a cutoff date, with Ghana having defaulted earlier that month, according to sources. However, others have pushed for March 24, 2020, because that was, of course, that was when the Group of 20 introduced its debt service suspension initiative to help the world's poorest countries uh, cope with the fallout of the COVID crisis at that time. Of course, we agree that um, Ghana did not participate in DSSI. Which dates? would you say is the most appropriate for adoption? Yeah, I believe that, you know, as, as you know, I mean, now the government has a chance to restructure the debt, right? So obviously the, the government will hope to get a date that will allow them to present as much of the debt that they owe to, for, for restructuring purposes. I think that would be 
uh, the best option. I cannot really tell what the government is looking at. I don't know the books now currently, what the government is looking at and what they think will be ideal. But of course, we all know that even at a private standpoint, you want to be have the room where you can really restructure as much of your debt as possible I mean, if your creditors will allow you. So I believe that that's what the government is praying for in this instance. And that's why uh, they are pushing for a letter day so that it will, it will allow them to be able to present as much of the debt that they, they, they owe to these creditors to be restructured. I believe that's what the government is looking for. So currently, I cannot say which one will be the best. They have to be the one to decide uh, which will be the best option for them. Well, to wrap up, um, Paul Frimpong, um, of course, we know that as of um, October 2023, uh, the Finance Ministry urged bilateral creditors to swiftly reach an agreement on debt relief terms uh, to facilitate the second tranche. And we know that there was a meeting held yesterday. We are waiting for details to come out. But now we are in January 2024. The talks uh, is said to be lingering because this is not the first time that Ghana will be holding such meetings with the creditors. What are the... Um, of course, point us to show that finally there would be an agreement that would be reached. Uh, probably in the next few hours or next few days, we'll be able to hear something something concrete from them. How optimistic are you, and how do you think that would help uh, Ghana's economy? I, I think there's been some there's been some bit of economic gains in recent times. Um, we are gradually seeing some bit of stability uh, in the Ghanaian economy, um, but of course, there are also rising risk as uh, because even this year's an election year 2024 is going to be an election in Ghana and we, we the, the trends when it comes to election period is not pretty when it comes to how we are we, we maintain fiscal discipline uh, we usually uh, overblow uh, our expenditure in the election year which then leads to wiping away all the gains that we might have got in the last three years leading to that election year so that is a rising risk uh, to that. But in the midst of this, I mean, leading to today, uh, in January 2024, I believe that the government might have made some gains in a good position to really, really uh, get a deal from the from these creditors, and that will go a long way to help. I mean, remember that in, in those times, the government of Ghana were had to even travel all the way to China to go and meet China because uh, because of the the, the the amount that Ghana owes to China as the single largest. Mm -hmm. creditor to, to Ghana. So I believe that this kind of, you know, looking at what has happened in recent time, look at the currency situation, of course, inflation has been uh, has been coming down, even though it's still in double digits uh, in, in the region, but then it's not as high as it used to be a couple of months ago. Uh, and look around the global economy as well. I believe that things are getting back on track uh, following the COVID-19 and, of course, the, the outcome of the Russia-Ukraine war. So I believe that this external uh, uh, you know, uh, gains up as, it, as they are coming in, and of course, domestically to okay. terms of inflation, to the currency stability, and all of that. I believe those are the things that the government is leveraging on to make a strong case that indeed we are in a position to meet our obligation if we're able to give us a room that we are asking for. Okay. That you can restructure, you can extend it to some extent, you can even forgive us some of the debt that will now be very much exciting for the government. So basically, that's what the government is looking at. And that's why they sound very optimistic that they will be getting something positive out of the meeting that is going to be held. I mean, that was held yesterday. We are hoping that that will be the outcome, that the, the deal will be reached with the Social Creators Committee, the IMF money, the second tranche will come, the World Bank, $550 million will also come in, mm. and that will push the government to, to move forward in Right let, me just, let, let me just get to keep hopes alive then. Thank you so much, I'm Paul Yofrin Pong, Development Economist and Executive Director, Africa China Center for Policy and Advisory. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. And that is the size of our package on Business Edge for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget that you can visit our, our social media handles at New Central TV. You can also visit our website, www.newcentral.africa and quality download our mobile app on App Store and Play Store. Thank you so much for your time. Tomorrow is another time. We will be back 11 a.m. West African time. I am Nikon on Banjo. Enjoy the rest of your day.